Well, if you're investing in the energy sector and if you're contemplating a position either directly or through a mutual fund in Chevron, you really need to take five minutes to let me bring you up to date in what we call Chevron's Ecuadorian nightmare. The good news is, is it's probably coming to a close soon. Now, this is a nightmare that's gone on for decades. It actually started about 20 years ago when Chevron had purchased Texaco and uh, what came to light was just a series of environmental disasters left from energy extraction in Ecuador by a partnership between Texaco and the Ecuadorian government. It was a 60-40 partnership, roughly Texaco in the minority position. Now what happened is they just decimated the environment in their energy extraction. Um, today there's still over 900 contaminated sites from the energy extraction and there's been an estimate of about 16 billion, 16 billion gallons of toxic waste uh, released into the Amazonian waterways. Now this has decimated the environment, it's decimated indigenous populations, and it led to a very strong and lengthy legal battle between Ecuador and Chevron. Chevron, while they've had um, a defense, they've presented a defense, um, they've battled this thing for a very long time, and the judgment has now come at 18 billion dollars. Now to put that into context for you, BP's oil disaster off the coast of Florida a couple of years ago settled out at around about 21, 22 billion dollars. This relatively untold story is sitting at an 18 billion dollar uh, settlement. It's one of the larger environmental transgressions we've seen uh, in history. And shareholders have really been coming down on John Watson, the CEO of Chevron, who was the CEO of Texaco, uh, for really improper disclosure to shareholders and bad management of this whole affair. And it's led to some significant reputational damage to Chevron, which has uh, lately uh, uh, really impacted their share price. Now, it's not only impacted their share price, it's also impacted their ability to do business in well, global operations, but South America for sure. In Brazil, November 2011, Chevron had a minor, what we would call a minor environmental issue off the coast of Brazil. Less than 3,000 gallons of oil leaked, uh, hydrocarbons they call it, uh, onto the seabed. None of it made it to the shore of Brazil and it was all contained and cleaned up within uh, four days, according to Chevron. Well, Brazil came down on them like never seen before. And if you put this into context, 3,000 barrels of estimated leakage versus 4 million that happened off the coast of Florida, this was nowhere near comparable to what happened in Florida. Uh, nonetheless, the head of Chevron Brazil was thrown in jail, uh, re re later released on bail, and up to 17 of Chevron's executives in Brazil had their passports confiscated, not allowed to leave the country. And it looks like just, just recently they're going to settle out at around a billion dollars. Now that is massive, but it really illustrates the reputational damages they've been incurring. As a matter of fact, the largest uh, union of oil workers in Brazil um, has filed a lawsuit to ban Chevron from uh, Brazil in the future. So they just are not uh, going uh, uh, very cleanly in South America, uh, likely from the Ecuadorian uh, uh, issues. Now, Cube, uh, as an ethical-based manager, joined through the UNPRI engagements with Chevron this summer. Um, uh, the engagements are asking uh, uh, Chevron to reconsider its lack of willingness to uh, settle out on this uh, lawsuit or now to pay the uh, judgment against them. They have been battling this for 20 years. They've battled it on U.S. soil. They've battled it on Ecuadorian soil. They've said that they would settle, uh, that they would uh, uh, pay uh, uh, judgments against them when they go to court and then they don't. Um, they, they really have not acted responsibly when it comes to this. They've had their defense, they've, they've, they've had their chance to uh, give their defense, and frankly it's now time to pay the fine. That's part of the engagement. Uh, the engagement also has gone further, a number of things including uh, asking the board at Chevron to include a board member that has environmental expertise to help mitigate future challenges that they've been um, shown to get into and uh, that the board is more transparent and discloses in a more uh, timely manner the liabilities related to, uh, to this and other similar types of, uh, of lawsuits. So why would an ethical-based investor hold Chevron? Well, what's interesting is this issue has now crescendoed after 20 years, but it's caused Chevron to clean up 
their uh, operations and make it more compliant from an environmental, social and governance standpoint. What we believe at Cube Consulting and Cube Benefit Management and Cube Investment Management is that they have reached their maximum engagement uh, with uh, shareholder, shareholder groups and ethical investor groups and likely are going to have to settle this thing out in, uh, in short order. And you can see that their change of behavior uh, has changed through their reporting to the Global Compact through their GRI reports. And companies that have been aggressively engaged by social investors uh, have proven to show change and show uh, uh, much recruit, uh, improved share prices post engagement. So if you look at this issue, it looks like the nightmare is coming to a close. There's only one final thing as an ethical uh, investment manager that we need Chevron to do, and that is to pay their fine in Ecuador. I'm Ian Quigley. I'm from Cube Investment Management in Edmonton, Alberta.